Action number one. Add 0.4 grams of sodium alginate to 10 centimeters cubed of water in a large beaker. Action number two. Stir the mixture with a glass rod until it is equally smooth throughout and leave it to soak for five minutes. Action number three. Add two grams of dried brewer's yeast to 10 centimeters cubed of water. Be aware, the yeast contains the enzyme to be immobilized. Separate. Action number four. Stir the yeast solution and leave it for five minutes. Action number five. Dissolve 1.5 grams of calcium chloride in 100 centimeters cubed of water. Action number six. Mix the alginate and yeast solutions thoroughly in a large beaker. Action number seven. Draw some of the resulting mixture into a 10 milliliter syringe with no needle attached. Action number eight. Slowly and steadily add a stream of alginate and yeast drops from the syringe to the calcium chloride solution. Hold the syringe at the same height, 10 centimeters, above the solution and gently stir the solution as you add the drops. This prevents them from clumping. A gel of calcium alginate forms, enclosing and immobilizing some of the yeast cells. Action number nine. Leave the beads to harden for 15 minutes in the calcium chloride solution. Action number 10. Filter the hardened beads of immobilized yeast cells and rinse them with water. This removes any yeast cells from outside the hardened beads. If necessary, the beads can be stored in water or dried in filter paper and stored in a refrigerator. Examining the application of immobilized enzymes, add 2 grams of dried brewer's yeast to 10 centimeters cubed of water. Action number 2. Pour this mixture into a separating pot. Action number three, pour the beads of immobilized yeast into a second separating funnel. A twisted up paper clip may be used to prevent the beads from blocking the outlet. Action number four, dissolve one gram of sucrose in 100 centimeters cubed of warm water. Action number five, pour 50 centimeters cubed of the sucrose solution into each separating funnel. Action number six, Test the products using glucose test strips such as Clinistix or Diastrix. Action number 8. Note and record the time taken for glucose to first form. Note that in most cases, glucose is formed more quickly in the separating funnel, containing the free yeast. The immobilized yeast is slower to start forming glucose. This is because it takes longer for the sucrose to penetrate the alginate beads and for the glucose to emerge from the alginate alginate beads. However, once they start producing the glucose, the immobilized enzymes can be reused very easily. Action number 9. Observe the products in each beaker. Compare the cloudiness of each solution. The free yeast solution contains many yeast cells and is very cloudy. The product of the immobilized yeast is much clearer because there are no yeast cells present. Remember kids, science is very dangerous and should be respected by all mankind. Yeah. <laughs>